Hi, welcome to my third uh, digital photography video. Um, today we're just going to look at a few tips on uh, what we can do around the home or in the garden while we're sort of under lockdown. Um, if you don't have a garden or a, or a window box or anything to play with, there's plenty of ways you can do this around the home. It's the same kind of terms and techniques and, and tips. So what we're looking at today is just doing something different with the camera instead of holding it at sort of eye level standing up arms out in the traditional way of taking photographs we're going to look at it from different angles and different perspectives um, just to make the interest uh, there in the photograph so things i look for when i'm out and about are things like lines that we can use to guide us to a point in the garden or whatever we're wherever we are we're shooting so for example um, I'm going to leave my camera there. I'm using the one on the phone, obviously, to film. Um, I haven't got a tripod with me today, so it's going to be hard to juggle both. So imagine what you're seeing now is what you'd see from a camera if you were using it. So first of all, we're going to look at lines. So if we move back, I can take a photograph of my garden. And as you can see, there's a few flowers out and bushes. It's okay, but it's not very inspiring. Now, if I use the washing line and angle the camera, that automatically gives me a line that takes me into the center of the photograph. Um, things like lead lines like this work really well. They're used in art all the while, uh, and we can use them in photography. And we can take our photos from above, looking down, just to really mess around with what the eye sees and what the camera captures. Um, if we go down lower still, we could use the edge of this slab, which is resting on a bit of old monumental architecture, but it gives us a line, it gives us an interest point that takes us to various places. And now we actually have the line above us and the line in the bottom corner we could go down further still. We can use the path to take us on a journey. And we're, t we're seeing um, what we'd not normally see at that height because we don't generally take photographs at that height. We tend to take them at human level, but there's nothing wrong with taking photos high up like a bird or lower down, like maybe your cat or your dog might see it. So we can try different heights and we can use lines to lead us in. The lines everywhere, whether it's the edge of a table in your living room or, or a kitchen worktop, you can play with this. Now, when we're doing things like nature, some little tips. Most people, when they see a bush of, and I apologize for the semi-dead nature of these, uh, flowers, they're gonna try and get the whole, th whole lot in. Well, that's okay, that works, and we can use the tree in the background to, to take us up out of the photograph. There's interest there, and there's a red flower just to, just to break it up a little bit. But we can also work in closer. Now, if you remember the last video, I mentioned about the distance of your thumb and your finger from the lens to the object. Now, obviously all cameras are slightly different, and it's a windy day, which doesn't help but trying to get your distance and your closeness and practice that because that really gives you the detail of the flower and because of the way the focus works on the cameras especially if it's on automatic mode you're going to find that um, it's either going to bring everything in focus in the middle of the picture and slightly blur everything else out because it's affecting the depth of field so you know it doesn't have to be a perfect flower and you don't have to have the best camera but there's a little beetle on that one or two and it just adds a bit of interest um, things like trees i'm just going to walk a bit further down the garden now trees are interesting because everyone tries to take a picture of a tree and get the whole thing in the picture but to me a tree is not that a tree is about texture and it's about colour and it's about shape and it's about form and we have a brilliant playground with a tree because instead of trying to get it all in we can try and 
get contrast and shape by resting the camera on the branches um, and just seeing where the lines of the tree take us. Now if you do this much further down, you start to get a feel for how big a tree is. It works really well if you put it against the side. It, it kind of tells us a tree is bigger than actually just standing back and trying to get it all in one shot. So we can do things like that. Leaves are great, can't really do it today, but if it's a sunny day, try and get the light to shine through the leaves and capture the detail of the veins and any kind of nibbling that's been going on. That's always a nice thing to try and do. Reflections always work well. I'm going over to this rather mossy looking bird bath but finding reflections of other things now the palm tree in the distance there is just sitting nicely around the center of that picture we can take the moss on the edge and bring that into the foreground it's just about trying to capture color shape texture or color and form and texture because we want people to look at the pictures to must be able to touch them. We want to be able to feel the experience that you're getting from taking the photograph. So obviously different lenses are going to be able to take different things but it doesn't stop you taking the person's eye on a journey throughout your picture. And as I said right at the beginning you don't have to have a garden, you can do this any way you like and it's it's a case of just looking around you using your eyes working out what looks good now i love these this is called honesty it's a bit dead but the colors are really nice it's starting to dry out and go see-through so things like that you know just look at what you want to grab it doesn't have to be a formal picture it can be anything you want it's just finding that composition or taking a section if you don't want to do a composition you know this poppy is slightly covered up here well that's okay we can grab as much of it as we can or let's take it from the side that you don't normally see a poppy the underneath so lots of different ways of doing it so i hope that it's going to sort of inspire you um, if you do take some photographs please send them over to um, independent arts so we can put them on their instagram account um, I'm sure if you uh, look on the website that'll give you details of that. I haven't got it to hand at the moment unfortunately. But I hope you found that hope, uh, helpful and uh, we'd love to see your pictures. So thank you.